Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, my name is Chris Stevens and I'm working at the Department of Green Chemistry and Technology of the Faculty of Bioscience Engineering at Ghent University. I'm senior full professor here at the faculty and member of the Synbioc Research Group. I'm very happy to collaborate in the framework of the faculty days and the front runners concept presenting one project of our work on fighting stoma rich tumors. My group is working along three different research lines. A first topic deals with the development of heterocyclic methodology for new classes of compounds with an emphasis on especially agrochemical and medicinal applications. In this area, we work towards analogs of natural products, such as, for example, epibatidine, a very powerful analgesic compound isolated from a poisonous frog, and psilocybin, a compound isolated from magic mushrooms, and that is now studied for its antidepressive potential. The lecture of today is also situated in this area of research. A second line of research of our group concentrates on the use of micro and meso reactor technology for the scale up of reactions, which are normally difficult to scale up under batch conditions. Here we look at the safe use of hazardous reagents, the scale up of exothermic reactions and the telescoping of reactions for the pharmaceutical industry. The third topic investigates the chemical modification of renewable resources in order to facilitate the transition of a fossil resources-based industry to a more bio-based industry, which is a very important societal concern today related to a circular bioeconomy. One of the examples of a project we are working on is the chemical modification of chitosan, a biopolymer which is abundant in food waste of marine origin. Here it is the idea to develop anti-fouling compounds with good biodegradability features. From our research on the synthesis of natural product analogs, we have been able to start the spin-off company Amalus Therapeutics, of which I am a co-founder. Today, I will tell you my story of a once-in-a-lifetime research journey. In our life, there are only a limited number of events that seriously direct the course of our career. A first very important one for me was the death of my mother at age 34. My brother, 11 years old, and myself being eight, were impacted considerably by this very sad and traumatic event. My mother died of breast cancer after being sick for five years after breast surgery and after a final relapse. We are talking about the year 1974. At that time, breast cancer was still a much more deadly disease than it is now. Years later, in 2004, a second directing event crossed my path. I was invited to give a lecture in New Delhi in India on chemical methodology and I knew that a colleague of the university hospital would also give a lecture at the same conference. Since I did not know the colleague personally, I had to ask the Indian host to show me and to bring me into contact with my Ghent colleague. During the reception on the first day of the conference, I thus met Professor Mark Bracke, oncologist at the Ghent University Hospital. It was a very warm and interesting meeting and a few whiskies later, we decided to have a close look at the collection of oncology results of the group of Professor Bracke. Being back at Ghent, we so did, and this became the start of a long, fruitful and eventful collaboration between our two labs. This unexpected meeting in New Delhi finally resulted in the creation of a spin-off company. This encounter also gave an unforeseen twist to the projects of our lab. The work of Professor Mark Bracke focused on a very aggressive type of breast cancer with a very bad prognosis for women who have this kind of breast cancer. This bad prognosis is still the case today for this aggressive, 
triple negative breast cancer. Generally, 90% of the cancer death today are due to the consequences of metastasis, but I hope that all the global efforts by many research teams will make a difference for the next generations of women who have an aggressive type of breast cancer. Professor Mark Bracca developed a test in his lab to screen for active compounds against metastasis of breast cancer using MCF7-6 cells. Heart fragments of chicken embryos are being cultivated and are then confronted with breast cancer cells. If no external products are added, the breast cancer cells invade the healthy heart tissue and after seven days, the tissue is converted completely to breast cancer tissue. However, if active compounds are added, the cancer cells cannot invade the heart tissue and the invasion can be stopped. The BRCA lab had analyzed hundreds of compounds that originated from native Indian plants and had found about 15 compounds with an activity with a concentration up to one micromolar in the chick heart assay. Seeing this collection of data, I recognized a certain pattern in the results. However, I could not believe that an indigenous Indian plant was synthesizing the most optimal compound to stop the invasion of this aggressive type of breast cancer. Therefore, we started a synthesis program producing compounds with a similar basic scaffold of the Indian plants. At that time, Bart Roman was looking for a thesis project and we embarked in the synthesis of natural compound analogs guided by a structure activity computer model developed by the late Professor Alan Kotritsky at the University of Florida, where I did my postdoc many years before. All pieces of the puzzle dropped at the right place. In one year, we developed compounds that were a hundred times more active than the initial compounds. So these compounds showed activity and 10 nanomolar, a concentration that is relevant in a clinical setting. We patented the results and we started the scientific journey that is still going on today. In the initial phase of the research, we spent a lot of time investigating the effect of our compound, which we called C16. It was the 16 compound we synthesized in the C series on the aggressive breast cancer cells we used in the chick heart assay. However, we did not find any convincing results. Later, in a cell confronting assay, we noticed, however, the enveloping of cancer associated fibroblasts by these cancer cells. This gave us some insight that we should investigate also the effect of our compounds on the cancer-associated fibroblasts. It was already in 1923 that Professor Dalman noticed the importance of fibroblast cells during wound healing experiments, in which he noticed that activated fibroblasts also had an important effect on the progression of cancer. The fibroblasts played a big role in contracting tissue during the wound healing, but also exerted unknown effects on cancer progression. Nowadays, the study of cancer-associated fibroblasts, the so-called CUFs, is a hot topic in the study of the progression of stroma-rich tumors, such as neck, breast, ovarian, brain, and lung cancers. Our studies at Ghent University now resulted in the creation of a university spin-off, Amalus Therapeutics, that further studies the compounds which have an unprecedented selectivity for cancer-associated fibroblasts. Their action remodels the microenvironment of the tumor and turns the cuffs back into normal, non-activated fibroblasts. Cancer-associated fibroblasts are a type of cells that surrounds the tumor and have a profound effect on the function and behavior of the tumor cells. They hinder the immunosuppression, they restrict the excess of drugs and the excess of therapeutics to the tumor, and they play a crucial role in the spreading of cancer cells throughout the body. 
the normalization of the cuffs into normal fibroblast cells thus allows a better penetration of immune cells, an improved drug access into the tumor, and a reduction of the metastasis of the tumor. Because our discovery program led to the compounds via a phenotypic screen based on living heart tissue and not through a target-based approach, it led to compounds with a favorable toxicity profile. When compounds would be too toxic, the living heart cells would have died in the screening process, which normally lasts for seven days. There is a big advantage compared to target screening programs, which often leads to good binders to a certain target protein, but which can have a questionable toxicity profile or a poor selectivity because of the influence on healthy cells. This is presented here for some compounds that are in the pipeline or are developed by some big pharmaceutical companies, such as erdafiltinib, an inhibitor of the fibroblast growth factor receptor. During our discovery journey, and after several consultations with key opinion leaders in the field, we have been able to demonstrate that our compounds exert several benefits over the current standards of care, such as their oral availability, the tolerability, and the unique mode of action. We have a good indication that we are onto a unique mode of action since we have investigated the effect of our active compounds on the targeted pathways of competitor compounds. In doing so, we notice that our compounds have no impact on the currently targeted pathways. We therefore believe that we will be able to develop a first-in-class compound to target an unmet need for stroma-rich cancers. We are hoping to continue our development and to have our first in human experiments in phase one early 2027, which is depicted here for our different compounds. Further, we are also setting up a high throughput discovery platform with an efficient functional readout so we can quickly check for novel compounds. As is depicted in the figure left, the functional readout shows a clear decrease between the control experiment and the amylose compounds. The ROC inhibitor, which is here the positive control, has still a bigger effect. However, the ROC inhibitor cannot be used in practice because of severe side effects. In a preclinical proof of efficacy experiment with triple negative breast cancer, in which we look at lung and liver metastases, it is clear that a considerable reduction of the number of metastases was observed. Also, a further study on the cancer-associated fibroblasts and the tumor-associated macrophages marker molecules showed a clear reduction of these important markers. Since our project on CAF modulating compounds has now received support by the Bioinnovative Institute from Denmark, we created the spin-off company Amalus Therapeutics that is also supported by a world-class team of experts in our advisory board. Our project got selected together with four other ones by the Bioinnovative Institute out of 75 submitted projects after a very stringent due diligence evaluation. Our team is now also being guided by this institute towards the next round of financing by facilitating contacts with venture capital providers. And Malice Therapeutics is also working closely together with Crick, Cancer Research Institute Ghent, Cancer Research UK and the Netherlands Cancer Institute in order to speed up our program. If you would be interested in collaborating with us or you would be interested in investing in our methodology, please be in touch for further discussions. So in summary, we developed two families of compounds on the basis of the structure of active compounds of indigenous Indian plants. Our C16 compound is able to induce changes in the cancer-associated fibroblasts 
leading to a remodeling of the microenvironment by normalizing these cells to normal fibroblasts. This should lead to a therapy that can be used on top of the current standard of care to cure or to reduce the impact of stroma-rich tumors. I hope this short overview gives you a good idea of one of our projects here at the Faculty of Bioscience Engineering in which interdisciplinary collaboration has led to innovation and valorization of fundamental research. It also illustrates a very personal research journey that was initiated as a chemical synthesis project, but that has evolved in a biotech effort with an endpoint in the medicinal field and is now further developing towards a pharmaceutical project. With that, I would like to close this presentation and I want to thank you for your kind attention. If you would have any questions, I will be happy to try to answer these. Thank you.